And good evening and welcome, everyone. Hello, Falcon family. Thank you for joining us tonight. Woohoo! Welcome, everyone. So fun to see all these people logging in. All these cool faces in a Zoom room. We love it. And so, it's been a long time since we've done virtual school on Zoom. I almost forgot. I know. It's been a minute. We are so glad we're in person, though. But it is nice to see you. Thanks for coming to our virtual science night. We're going to let a few more folks come on in. We know folks are making dinner, cleaning up dinner, taking a bath, getting out of the bath, getting ready to go to a second job, coming home from a second job. So we will give folks a few more minutes to get here and then we'll get started. And we're going to talk about some really cool science tonight. I'm excited. I am too. Um, I'm like so excited. I'm excited that you are excited, Benjamin. Woohoo! Hi, Nice to see so many awesome falcons. Mm -hmm. I see Icarus. Hi, Icarus. Hi. I see Brianna. Ben, Hi, Brianna. Hello. Hi. Hey. You look like Donut. Hello. It's nice to see Hi. everyone. I see Kevin and Jesus. Oh my goodness, all these falcons. My dad is here too. I see him. Thank you, Icarus. I'm what? Hi, Mr. Honore. I love, I love that families are doing <laughs> science together. Hey, why didn't you tell me your last name? I think we're all going to enjoy boy. this. In a moment, when we get started, we will mute everyone just so that we can make sure everyone hears. And then there'll be a chance to ask questions when our evidence technician from Vacaville PD joins us in a little bit. But we're going to do a little bit of science and exploration first, and then we'll get started. So... Welcome, welcome. Give it a few more minutes, but I think my, my dog is joining. Here. Now, Mrs. Slusser is moderating the chat, which means that she is the one checking over what's put in the chat and making sure that what's said is appropriate. Um, so she's also going to be checking to see if there are any questions. Um, going on. So thank you, Mrs. Slusser, for that. But remember, what you put in the chat, everyone can see, right? And it means that this is a school event. So if you're putting stuff in the chat that you shouldn't, well, then you'll probably be seeing me and Mrs. Adams tomorrow. So just think about that. Okay. Got a few more and folks dog the room. It is nice to see folks. I'll put the Pink Panther music on just one more time. Now, if you've never seen the Pink Panther movie, you know that he is a crime solving cat. Hi, whoever just said hi. I'm Mr. Moffat. Hello. Elias. Hi, Mr. Moffat. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. Mr. Moffat. That's my name. Can you see me? I can hear you, but we've. My Hello, screen Samuel. are on multiple screens, so I don't know if I can see everyone. But I'll see. Hello. So hello, here. Mr. Moffat. Hello, hello, hello. Mr. Moffat. This is like, um, this should be like my favorite event ever. It's I'm awesome. glad. I hope it is. It's exciting. I got all my stuff. So, what's I don't see any more folks in the waiting room, so I think we're here. So I'm going to get started. Welcome to our virtual science night. We are recording this in case some folks um, couldn't make it tonight. We'll put it in the family newsletter so you can see. But hi, everyone. Welcome to our virtual science night. I'm Mr. Moffat. I'm the principal. And I don't have a funny hat on right now. I guess I don't have very many funny hats in my house. But I'm so excited to see you all. And joining us is Mrs. Adams. Hey, Mrs. Adams. Hi, guys. Hi, Falcons. Thank you for joining us today. And you already know that Mrs. Slusser is moderating the chat. I think 
We also saw Mrs. Smith here. I'm wondering if there's any other teachers in the room, but if they are, thank you so much for joining. I know I saw Ms. Afshari join. Thank you, Mrs. Afshari, for being here. And I see uh, Miss Diana from the office is here. Ms. Dylan joining us tonight. So welcome, everyone. It is nice to see you. So you know that we are a science-focused school. We love science because that helps us understand the world around us and figure out what's going on and how we can make that world a better place. So can you show me your 10 fingers? Put them up in the air. You can wiggle them. Now, if you look at the tips of your fingers, you have some patterns on them. Can everyone say pattern? Patterns. 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 Pattern. And what happens with your fingers is that they get oil and grease on them. And when you touch things with your fingers, you leave prints behind with those oils and that grease. Those are called your fingerprints. And everyone's fingerprint is hey, Samuel. So if you take a look at your finger, you can make some observations about your fingers. They are all different. They all have different designs and patterns on them. Pretty cool. And so scientists, detectives, police officers can figure out who people are based on their fingerprints. So before we get started, I want to just play a little game with everyone here using your fingers. I call it one finger or two fingers. So you either need to put up one finger in the air or two fingers in the air. One finger or two fingers. Are you ready? Okay. Now, you can also put it in the chat one or two if you don't have your camera on. That works as well. So here's my question. One finger or two fingers? Would you rather eat pizza or eat tacos? One or two? Ooh, it's kind of divided. I'm seeing ones and twos. We've even got siblings where one says one and the other says two. They're both pretty good. I, I don't know. Mrs. Adams, what are you deciding? Are you eating pizza or tacos? Tacos. I think I'm going with pizza. Tacos. Can we still be friends, Mrs. Adams? Of course we can. Okay, good. There's no right or wrong answer, just like there are no right or wrong fingers. Okay, here we go. Okay, number one, be able to fly. Two, be invisible. I know. I know. I know. I know. One, be able to fly. Two, be invisible. What would you want to do? I'd rather be invisible so nobody can see me. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty one or two. Okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing another split ones and twos. I'm not sure how we're going to decide. Mrs. Adams, I agree with you. I think I kind of would want to fly. Yep. Yep. But invisible would be pretty cool, especially if you wanted Mr. to get away. Moffitt. That's my name. I okay. have a question. Oh, hold your question, Benjamin, for a little bit later, okay? Number two, or the third question, one finger or two fingers, would you rather get a puppy or get a kitten? Get a puppy or get a kitten? Puppy. I love puppy. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I think one is, I'm seeing more ones on this one, Mrs. Adams, but I know you love your kitty yeah. cat. Yes, I'd like a little playmate if I could. See, if I had a kitty, I would just be sneezing all day long because I'm allergic. So then that wouldn't be good, Mr. Moffat. We need, no. a, we need a one in the air right now. Noah answered really great. He says none because his mom and dad won't let him. Yet you kind of have to ask your mom and dad for a puppy or a kitten. You got to ask those grown ups at home. They take, a, they take a lot of work. Okay, number one or number two, one finger be rich, two fingers be famous. Do you want to be rich or famous? Ooh. Oh, we want, we see some millionaires coming here. I'm seeing I, lots of ones. I want, I want I, to take one. I will take one because me and my grandma are saving up to get a new house. Oh my gosh. We have a, we have a. Well, if you're famous, right you there. make money whenever you. I love it. Okay. You know, Maybe I if you're famous, you'd also be rich. Maybe if you're rich, you'd be famous. Who knows? I don't know. <coughs> I I'm going with the money. Show me the I money. Have, I can't figure I it out. Mr. Moffat. 
I would rather um be rich so I can save so I could save for an apple pencil. Mm -hmm. Cool. I love it. You're you're making some good plans. Number one finger or two fingers? Would you have a, rather have one eye in the middle of your head or two noses? Like your oh, no. <laughs> one eye right in the middle of your head or two noses? I want two because then I could see them. <laughs> Three, two. Some people aren't putting up any fingers here. No. Well, because we're all confused by this question, Mr. Mom. Especially with me, like when you wear glasses, it'd be kind of awkward to wear glasses with two Neither. Eyes. Neither of them. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> people not want to vote Daniel, on this one. They're Daniel, abstaining. Daniel. When you do, when you decide not to vote, you abstain. So I love it. Okay. Okay. Uh, final question: Would you rather be one super smart or two super popular? Popular. 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 Scared. Smart. Popular. Smart. Hey, hey, hey! Smart or popular? Okay, I see it. I think if I'm super smart, I'm going to be pretty popular. People will like me for being yeah, smart on the brain. Okay. Mrs. Lesser, can you mute everyone? Can you hear me? Thumbs up if you can hear me. Mrs. Adams, can you hear me? Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do is show you a quick video about fingerprints so that we can learn a little before we experiment with our fingers and see if we can get our prints. So here we go, enjoy this brief video. Squeaks is getting ready to tell me a riddle he heard. Okay, Squeaks, go ahead. What is something that you always have with you and that you always leave behind? Hmm, I'm not sure. Can I have a hint? The answer's right at the tips of my fingers? Wait, is the answer my fingerprints? Awesome, that was a great riddle, Squeaks. Fingerprints are the skin patterns on the ends of your fingers and thumbs. If you look closely at the tips of your fingers under a bright light, you'll see some bumps and ridges that make kind of a pattern. Those patterns have been with you your whole life and they go with you everywhere. But the bumps and ridges also leave marks behind. You might have seen these marks on a mirror or window or even on paper if you've gotten marker or paint on your fingertips. But we always leave these fingerprint marks even if we can't see them. That's because the skin that covers our bodies, including our fingers, makes sweat and oil. That sweat and oil mixes together and covers the tips of our fingers. When we touch something or pick it up, the sweat and oil get left behind and make a mark that looks a lot like the pattern on our fingertips. You can see this for yourself. All you need to check out one of your own fingerprints is a pencil, a piece of white paper, and some clear tape. First, tear off a piece of tape. It doesn't have to be too big, just enough to cover the tip of your finger. Put the tape on the table so that the sticky side is up. Then use the pencil to make a nice dark spot on the paper. Make it really dark. Now take your pointer finger and rub it on your forehead right next to your hairline. This will help to put some extra oil on that finger and to make a better fingerprint. Press your pointer finger on the pencil spot. Rock it back and forth like this. Now press your finger down onto the sticky side of the tape. Try to make sure you press straight down so you don't smudge your fingerprint. Carefully peel the tape off, stick it onto the clean side of the paper, and smooth it out gently. Can you see your fingerprint? Scientists have noticed that there are three main patterns in fingerprints. The arch, the loop, and the whirl. I think that mine looks like a whirl. Cool. And you know what's even cooler? Each of your fingers has a different pattern, and nobody else has fingerprints that are quite like yours. Your fingerprints are something that makes you different from every other person. When you get bigger, your fingerprints get bigger, but their patterns don't change. Your fingerprints are truly a body part that helps to make you you. The fact that everyone has different fingerprints can also be pretty useful. The police can use fingerprints to solve crimes. Like if someone steals jewelry from a store, 
If they know the thieves touched the cabinets where they keep the diamonds, the police can figure out who did it by checking who has a matching fingerprint. You can also use a fingerprint kind of like a key or password. You've probably seen people do that to open up their phone or tablet. Oh, you're right, Squeaks. It is my turn to tell you a riddle. I think I'll use my fingerprint to open up my phone and see if I can find a good one. Thanks for joining us. If you want to keep learning and having fun with Squeaks and me, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to check us out on the YouTube Kids app. Thanks and we'll see you next time here at the fort. So, that was a little bit more background knowledge about fingerprints, okay? So, everyone got a fingerprint kit with them, okay? And what I want you to do is to take out the white piece of paper where it has the different types of fingerprints and these boxes. So take out that piece of paper because we want to see if we have loops, whirls, or arches on our fingers. Those are the three different types of fingerprints. Loops, whirls or arches. We'll see if we can figure it out. Now also in your kit, you got a ink pad. They're all different colors. So instead of getting the pencil like we saw in the video, we're gonna use the ink pad and we're gonna do our best to see if we have loops, whirls or arches, okay? So the way the ink pad works is you take the ink pad, you press your finger right into the ink pad, and you are going to get some ink on your fingers. Now, when you press it down, you don't wanna move that fingerprint all around. You just wanna press it down, leave it there, and then press it right up. So this is my right thumb, and that's gonna go in the right thumb box. Press it down, press it up, just like that. So take a look at your right thumb on that print. We've also given you a magnifying glass so you can try to identify if your right thumb has loops, whirls, or arches. Loops, whirls, or arches. I don't know. And if you find out if your right thumb has loops, whirls, or arches, feel free to put it in the chat. I'm not sure I can tell. Oh. I'm experiment again and see. Oh, I figured it out. Oh, okay, we've got arches. We've got loops. I know it's hard. I can't really tell either. Okay, now I'm gonna try my left thumb. So I'm gonna take my other thumb. I'm gonna put it in the ink and I'm gonna see what I come up with with my left thumb. Remember, when you place it down, you wanna just place it down. Don't rub it back and forth, that'll smudge it. Just press it down and then lift it up. I'm going to take my magnifying glass and I'm going to try and tell. You can continue down the line trying to do each of your fingerprints, okay? And see if they are different. Are they going to be all the same or all different? I don't know. So my left index finger. Ooh. My right index finger. My right middle finger. 
my left middle finger, my left ring finger, my right ring finger, my right pinky, and my left pinky. And I filled all mine in. I know, Zeph and I, it's hard to tell. Sometimes you think it's one thing, and then you look closely, and it's a little different. I think I have it figured out, and then I go, oh, it could be something else. Aiden writes that Aiden's grandmother has all worlds. Pretty cool. And Audra's mom has arches. Do you have the same as someone in your family right now? I wonder if it's genetic. If your grandparents have loops, will you have loops? I don't know. All I know is that everyone's actual patterns are different. Now we gave you some other supplies in the bag as well, okay? And it's pretty cool to see what you can do with that when you have a moment. So in a second, I'll explain what you can do with some of the other stuff. You have directions on it down here, but I am going to let... So in the kit, you have some cool things. So let me talk about them. You've got a plastic cup. If you touch this cup with your hands, it will leave fingerprints around the edges of the cup. And you can then take the powder that's in this other bag, and you can see if you can dip your brush into the powder and dust for prints. Will you see your print if you dust on it? It may or may not come out. You'll have to experiment and see. How are you gonna get the print off the cup? Well, you're going to use the tape. And with the tape, oops, try another piece of tape. Go from the cup to the piece of paper. We'll see if you can do it. If not, that's okay. Mine's not working, but that's what scientists do. They explore and they experiment. And you can then put that piece of paper or that tape down on the paper. So that's something that you can try after the meeting. See if you can be an evidence technician, just like Mrs. Coughlin, who will be joining us in a moment. So Andrew said, I froze, sorry about that. Am I back, can folks hear me? Okay. Oh, hey, Mrs. Aronson, I see you. Nice to hear you. Hey, Taya. So we'll see where else you can find fingerprints. And We'll hear in a little bit from Miss Nicole Coughlin. Hello, evidence technician Coughlin. How are you? All right, can everybody hear me? Ah, uh, we hear you now. Perfect. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, of course. I'm excited. Um, so I understand that we are doing our virtual science night and everybody went home with a print kit. Is that correct? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah we did. That's awesome. OK, so I do have some things that I want to share with you tonight. Um, I do have a quick PowerPoint. I'm going to see if I can go ahead and share my screen. Um, see here. 
Principal Moffat, are you able to give me any direction on how I can share my screen? Oh, I think I see it. Do you see a big green button on the monitor that says share screen? Yes. Awesome. Okay. All right. Can, can everybody see what I'm seeing? Not yet. Not just yet. Okay. Oh, it says that the host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, okay. Well. She's not yet a co-host. She's just a participant. Oh, I see. I thought I made you a co-host. I'm so sorry. No, no worries. Okay. Can you guys see that now? And. Perfect. Okay, so here we go. Um, I want to thank you guys again for having me tonight. I was really excited when I heard that um, that you guys were having this virtual science night and I get to talk about my job, which I love so much. So um, we'll just go over some basics today. And I'm sure you guys already have some knowledge about some things um, that you've gone over with Principal Moffitt. So again, my name is Nicole. Um, I work for the Vacaville Police Department. I actually grew up in Vacaville. It's my hometown. Um, I went to Payton Elementary School, and then I went to Jepson Middle School, and then graduated from Vaca High School. So, you know, I'm, I'm growing up in the same place that you guys are living in right now, which is kind of cool, I think. Um, I started working at the police department in 2013. I started as a college intern in our youth services section. So I helped um, students get community service hours and get lots of experience for like college applications and they got work experience, which was cool. Um, I have been working in evidence since April, 2020. I'm sorry about my doorbell. Um, so I have been here two years and it is my favorite position. And so I'm so excited to tell you guys more about it today. And this picture here is just of me in front of our crime scene investigations van, which is something that we get to take out to different scenes. Um, it's super handy and useful because when we go out to crime scenes, we don't need to go back and forth to the police department to get our equipment. So we can just go into the van, get things um, ready to go. And so um, we have tons of things in there, all the fingerprinting things that you could think of. We have cameras, we have um, tons of different tools. So it's fun. So today we're gonna go over some of the fingerprinting basics. Um, we're gonna just review the patterns again that I'm sure you guys discussed. And then I'll go over different techniques for lifting fingerprints. Um, we're not gonna talk too much about like identifying fingerprints that's somebody else's job. And it's this like whole other thing. It takes lots and lots of training and certifications and everything to be the person that looks at a fingerprint and says, this belongs to John Doe. Um, so we'll mostly go over how I collect it on the job. All right, so can I just have everybody like hold up their cups and everything that they printed? I just wanna see. Awesome, you guys look like you did great. Beautiful, okay. so. As an evidence technician, it's also known as a crime scene investigator, this position, um, my main job is to collect and preserve evidence when I'm out on a scene. So with fingerprints, for example, I want to be able to locate them. So usually I'll talk to anyone that's involved and they can tell me where the bad guy was like standing, what things they were touching, and then I'll go dust for prints or process whatever else. And then once they're located, the goal is to preserve them and book them as evidence so we can use them for future um, cases or anything like that. So these are the basic, um, the basic shapes that we have here. So on the left, we have a loop on in the middle. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be closing this. In the middle, we have the whorls. And then on the right, we have arches. And there's a variety under each type, but these are just the basic ones we're gonna go over today. So you can see that we have a loop here. Um, loops tend to enter on one side, they curve and then they exit on the same side that they came in from. So if you follow this example, if you start 
um, following one of the lines, you'll see that it starts on the left, it curves, goes up, recurves, and then it exits on the left. So that's what the typical loop looks like. Next, we'll go over the whorls. The whorls are pretty easy to identify because they're very circular in their pattern. So if you go to one of like these middle lines, you'll see that they make pretty good oval, circular, spiral kind of shapes. And then we have our arches. These ones are pretty easy to identify as well. Um, arches will typically enter on one side, curve in the middle, and then they'll exit on the opposite side. So here you can see the lines start on the left, then it goes up and it curves in the middle, and then it exits out the right. All right, and so here, sorry, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. So here we have a more realistic view of um, the fingerprints and what they would actually look like. Um, so you can compare that to the little drawing that we have. So again, we have the loop here on the left. And if you follow this like white highlighted part, you can see that it enters on the left, curves up, um, curves up and around, and then it exits on the left as well. We have the whorl in the middle. So you can see that like circular shape. And then one thing that I just want to point out is this little area here. Can you guys see kind of like a triangle shaped part of that fingerprint? There's also a triangle on the bottom right here. These are called the deltas. Deltas are where these lines start to kind of split up and, and take different directions. So if you look at this delta on the left, you can see these lines going up and to the left. And then, I apologize. And then over here, you can see them kind of go down and to the right from the left side delta here. And then you can see on the right side delta, the lines going down and to the left and up and to the right. So that's a typical, um, that's a, another typical feature that whorls have are those deltas. And then lastly, we have the arches. And again, you can see it enter on the left, curve in the middle, exit on the right. So those are our basic prints. So this is one thing that I have at my work. This is the same exact model and everything that you would see if you were to visit me at the police department. This is called a cyanoacrylate fuming chamber. And it was a very big word, cyanoacrylate fuming chamber. It's also known as a super glue tank. So this is a really cool um, piece of equipment that we use on a regular basis. Essentially what it does is when you open it up, it has two heating plates on the inside. On one of the heating plates, you put a little cup of water and on the other heating plate, you put a little cup with a few drops of super glue. And it's just like the normal super glue that you would find at the store. When you turn on the heating plates, it helps the, the liquid super glue turn into a gas. So um, the water is there to help um, kind of hydrate the air. Um, it kind of humidifies it, allowing the, the gas to like expand and everything. And that super glue adheres to the moisture that is left behind by your fingerprints, which is really cool. So when, when it dries, um, the fingerprints is a little, little bit lifted off of whatever surface it's on, and it makes it easier for us to use fingerprint powder on it and get the print off of that item. So this is a picture of um, a casing, which is a part of ammunition. So you can see on the left-hand side, um, you can kind of see a smudge. There may or may not be a fingerprint there, but it's kind of hard to see. This is before it goes into the super glue tank and the picture on the right is after it's processed in the super glue tank. So you can see on the right, um, you can see a lot more of the lines and the ridges left behind the fingerprint. So it makes it super easy for fingerprint powder to stick to that so that when you guys put the tape on it, and remove the tape, it actually has something um, picked up. 
So that's a really handy tool that we use almost on a daily basis. It's one of my favorite things for sure. And then here we just have different pictures of quality of fingerprints. So you can see on the left, we have a good fingerprint. Um, the lines are really clear. You can see the definition between um, the black lines and the white lines. The black lines are actually the raised ridges on your fingers and the white is just the space in between. So you can see where the lines start, where they end, where they split up and everything. And those are all characteristics that, um, that a print identifier would need to say that this belongs to whoever. In the middle, you can see there's a medium quality print. That one has some detail in it, mostly at the bottom. Um, you can still see some good lines. This is the delta right here, but you can see on the upper half of it, it starts to get a little smudged. So it's hard to see where the lines start, where they end, and that makes it more difficult to identify who prints belong to. And then on the right, you can see um, bad quality fingerprints. And these ones are nearly impossible for identifiers to use just because the lines are blurred. You can't really see where they end, where they begin, where they split up. And all those things are super important since fingerprints are unique. Nobody else has a fingerprint like you do. And so um, we need to be able to see those individual characteristics that make them special. So next I'm gonna go over another fingerprinting technique that we have, and this is what we use at work as well. These ones aren't my pictures, but I have done um, this a few times and it's really cool. So um, on the left, you'll see a substance being piped out. It's called Accutrans. Um, it is a silicone casting. So it's really cool because it comes out as a liquid and then after a few minutes, it dries and it feels almost like a rubber. So on the left, I believe they, um, they have a, a handprint on a tile. So like a tile that you would find in your kitchen or in your bathroom. Um, there's a tile with the handprint on it and you can see the person starting to put the Accutrans down on that print. On the right hand photo, you see that they're putting even more. Um, you want to try to do it as smoothly as possible without getting any bubbles there, because if there are bubbles, then um, it won't pick up what's beneath it. So you want to try to get it as flat as possible. In this slide on the left, you can see there's even more Accutrans covering the handprint. And then on the right is when it's completely done drying. You can see that the handprint is now on the Accutrans instead of the tile. And this is really handy for us because um, once it dries there, it's permanent. There is no removing any of the fingerprint powder or anything like that. It is there to stay. You can put your hands on it and it won't smudge at all, which is really cool for us. Um, so it's very handy. This, um, before I get to that picture, this Accutrans is really good for um, like weird surfaces. Like ideally you would wanna get fingerprints off of, you know, windows, um, tiles, like I said, flooring because they're nice smooth surfaces. But sometimes we don't have the option to print on perfect surfaces. And so this stuff is really cool because if you have trouble getting tape off of something that's like curved, for example, then you, you can use Accutrans and it will adhere just fine. So next is a picture that I took. Um, I actually put those fingerprints on a little orange. It's like a little cutie, you know, those snacks that we have. So I put my own fingerprints on them. I dusted it with fingerprint powder. And you can see that I was able to get some good fingerprints off of them. And the picture on the right is just a, a higher quality or zoomed in um, photo. So you can see that there are two fingerprints layered on top of each other and it's an orange, so it's a curved surface. And this is the Accutrans that I was able to take off of the orange. 
So I used a clear AccuTrans and I put it directly on top of the fingerprints on that orange. And then after I let it dry, I was able to peel the fingerprint off. So next I'm gonna go over fluorescent powder. Um, fluorescent powder glows in the dark and it's really handy for us um, when it comes to like multicolored surfaces. So if you're printing something and you can't really see the black powder or the white powder, it might be helpful to have a powder that's hot pink, like this, um, like the powder in this photo. So you can see that this girl, she has her gloves on, she has her brush, and she's taking that hot pink fluorescent powder and dusting that bottle. And when you use um, that like glow, glowing fingerprint powder, you do need a certain light source that will make it glow. So in this next photo, you can see that the fingerprints are glowing and that's when it has the correct light source. Um, so you can see the prints a lot more easily. This is a picture of the same exact thing. It's the glowing fingerprint powder plus the light source on a soda can. Um, the, the photo on the right is just a zoomed in picture of that, but you can start seeing fingerprints up in this top left area, kind of in the middle on top of the logo, you can see the lines starting um, to form. So then you would also collect it the same way as you guys did tonight. You would put some tape over it and then take the tape off and then put it on a fingerprint card. So those are the pictures of the, um, the fingerprints that I have for today. I just wanted to share some photos of me actually at work. So on the left is a picture of myself, my supervisor, Jody, and my partner, Laura, in front of our crime scene investigations van. So again, that's just where we keep all our tools and our equipment. So if we're on a scene, you know, um, trying to process something after a bad guy was there, we have all the tools right there next to us, which is really handy. On the right is a picture of myself and my partner, Laura, again. Um, we actually got an award for being a part of the 2019 case of the year at the police department. So that was really exciting. This next photo was also um, a scene that I had to do at work. It was taken on the same day. You can see on the left, I had a gas mask that I had to wear. And this is my uniform and my vest that I wear. Um, the picture at the right was actually on the scene with my partner. The reason why we were all dressed up is because the bad guy um, was in a standoff with the officers for like 10 hours. And they ended up using a lot of pepper spray and so um, once pepper spray is, um, is admonished, I guess, um, it becomes very difficult to breathe. And so you, it's, uh, it's something that makes you cough and sometimes it even makes you cry. And so that's why we needed to be covered to protect ourselves while we were actually inside. In this last slide, um, it's just two pictures that, that are really important to me that I wanted to show you guys. So on the left, that was me right here in the green jacket. I want to say it was in fifth grade. Um, and I was with an officer named officer Neil. He was one of the officers that would ride like the motorcycle around town. And on the right is a picture of me and the very same officer on his last day of work before he retired. Um, so those pictures are like, 15 years apart, which is really cool. And you can see on the right, I'm holding the very same picture in my hand. So that one's that, that is a photo that's really special to me. Um, it's just funny how things worked out, you know. And that's all I have for you today for fingerprinting basics. Um, if you guys have any questions, I would, I would love to see what I can answer. So that's me. Wow. <laughs> Evidence Tech Coughlin, that was amazing. Um, <laughs> did, did you always know that you wanted to go work for the police department? It's not something that I always knew I wanted to do. So I learned that I had um, 
this passion for working in law enforcement and for the police department when I was in college. Again, I started um, as an intern in our youth services section. And just the more time that I spent at the police department, the more I realized that I really loved working for them. So yeah, it's because of that, because I didn't know that it was always something I wanted to do. I think it makes that special with uh, that photo with officer Neil even more special because things just happen to work out in this like kind of magical way. So. So you don't have to have it all figured out right now in elementary school, right? You can go and explore and, and see what you're interested in and where it takes you. And you, yeah. never, you know, that's so cool. Absolutely. Um, if folks have questions, they can put it in the chat and I'm happy to um, shout them out or you can raise your virtual hand and I'll ask you to unmute and you can mm -hmm. ask a question. So Andrew, I see that you have a question for Evidence Tech Coughlin. So I'm gonna ask you to unmute and you can ask. Oh, Andrew, try one more time. What made you wanna be an officer? Um, so Again, I started interning for the police department when I was in college and an internship is when you start working with the place and start getting experience and start learning what you like and what you don't like. Um, usually the point of internships is to kind of give you an idea to see if it's something that you want to pursue at the end. Um, and so, yeah, while I was working in youth services, um, I just realized that I really liked serving the public. Um, I liked working with, um, with an organization that was dedicated to taking care of its community. And that's what I've found in Vacaville. So yeah, that's why I decided to continue working there. Um, and I decided to pursue my position as an evidence technician because I like being out and about and being out in town and um, different sciences kind of fascinate me and I'm always learning. So it's fun being able to take different um, techniques and applying them in my work and trying to catch the bad guy. So I see that Olivia and Annalise have raised their hands. So Olivia and Annalise, I'm going to ask you to unmute and then you can ask your question. Um, what other crimes have you faced? I have done, um, a number of them. So I have, I've worked burglaries where, you know, somebody came into the bank and demanded that, you know, they get handed some money. I've had to deal with stolen vehicles, um, house break-ins, you know, I've done a lot of things like that. And, um, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you get evidence left behind, such as fingerprints or sometimes even DNA. Sometimes there is footage because a lot of people have security cameras now, but sometimes you don't get lucky and very little is left behind. So you never know what you're going to get, but yeah, I've, I've done quite a few different kind of. Hi, Alyssa. I saw you in the chat. Tell her thank you. Thank you. So you have, I, thanks so much, <laughs> Olivia and Anais. I'm going to ask <laughs> Evan to unmute yeah. himself. Go for it, Evan. Hi. It's, uh, can you hear me? I can. Cool. Um, Evan's dad actually has a question on behalf of Evan. We we're sort of chatting about this. Um, I, un I know that uh, that CSI show was really popular and um, my understanding is that people t have might have some misconceptions about like the kind of technology that you use when you <laughs> do this job and whatnot. It, have you found that to be the case? And um, have you encountered that? Like people thinking you have these like super weird, like high tech things when in fact, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's something that we um, come across on a regular basis. So if you, uh, if you think back to a few slides ago where I was showing the different quality of fingerprints, everybody who has like print work done in their vehicle or in their home, they always expect the most perfect fingerprint that you can think of. But unfortunately, more often than not, we, 
we end up with the smudgy ones where you can't tell where the lines start and where they begin. So that's something that happens often. Um, I think another misconception that has um, occurred because of like television is the, the time, like the turnover. Unfortunately, it takes a long time to get results back. Um, again, I am not a like fingerprint examiner. I'm not an identifier. So when I collect these things, if it's any good and of good quality, then I'll send it to the Department of Justice. And over there, they have employees and experts that will look at the fingerprints and will be able to compare and say, you know, this was made by this person. Um, but unfortunately, um, they're overwhelmed. They get a lot of fingerprints from all over the state. And so they have a lot to go through. So on TV, you see them getting print hits right away. But in real life, it can take months before we get any results back. I see that Zephaniah has his virtual hand raised. Hey, Zephaniah, you can unmute yourself. Um, so my question is, um, is there anything about your job that like um gave you a, a like a different perspective on life? Definitely. Oh, that's a great question. Um yes, one thing that um I've realized about my job and just working in law enforcement in in general is that people don't really need the police unless they're having a bad day. So that's something that I have to keep in mind. <laughs> my dog just jumped out. And that's something that I have to keep in mind. Um, you know, people don't really call the police when they just want to like hang out and say hi. It's because they need help. And so that's offered me a different perspective because, um, you know, you have to be patient with people and understand um, that they need you to do something that they might not be able to do themselves. So it's taught me a lot of patience. Such a great thing to learn. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, so many good hands. Okay, <laughs> I see Maisie and Ozias so Obando. Hey, Maisie. I, I just wanted to ask, how long did it take for you to become an evidence detector? That is a great question. So when I first started, I had to go through a two-week training. Um, and in the two weeks, I completed 80 hours worth of, um, of like formal in-class stuff and like practicals outside to become a certified evidence technician. But one thing that I love about my job is that I am always getting training. And so um, I'm always learning different things, different techniques. And so even though, um, you know, I did that two week thing to certify, um, I have been doing on the job training for the last two years and I'm still learning, um, which is one of my favorite things about it. So I know that's kind of like, kind of a, a different approach to that question, because technically it took not very long, but in reality, you know, it's still an ongoing process, if that makes sense. That's good questions. I think we have time for maybe one or two more. So uh, Ben, will you unmute yourself? Um, so, When did you um started being a pol police officer? <laughs> so um I started well I started my internship in 2013 while I was still in college. And then I worked a bunch of different positions, but I really started working closely with officers when I became um, a community service officer on patrol. So if you guys are ever around Vacaville and you see those officers in a white truck, they usually have a blue uniform. Those officers um, help take low priority calls is what we call them. Um, so they're not so urgent. It means, you know, something bad has happened, but the person responsible isn't around. So nobody's getting arrested or anything like that. So these community service officers go out, they document, they collect evidence. Um, 
they speak with the victims and, you know, they do investigations and everything. And I started that in 2018. Um, so yeah, I did that for a while. Um, and then I've been doing evidence the last two years. So that was so cool. cool. <laughs> that is very cool. And there's been a lot of comments that have been coming into me direct message saying how awesome this is. And thank you so much for sharing your story. And I see the Big B sisters are there. Would you unmute yourself and get the last question of the night? What does it feel like to be an officer? <laughs> um, it feels great doing what I do. I absolutely love it. Um, I love being able to help people. Um, I love getting to like connect with the community and doing things like this, like I am with you guys tonight. It's one of my favorite things ever. Um, I absolutely love my job and I'm really lucky because I know that not everybody can say the same, but yeah. I absolutely love my job. It's so fun. Um, I'm always learning new things and I'm experiencing new things. I'm meeting great people like you guys tonight. So. If it's something that you're interested in, um, I think it's absolutely worth it. And it's worth pursuing. And if it's not something you're interested in, I hope you guys go out there and find what you love and do it. And, you know, it'll all be worth it to, to be able to experience so many different things that bring you joy. That's cool. Evidence Tech Coughlin, thank you so much. You've inspired, I think, some future crime scene investigators and Love it. some future <laughs> evidence techs. And you've got the fingerprint kits at home that you can use to kind of experiment and explore. Like, are there a bunch of loops or whirls or arches in your family? Does it depend on boys or girls? Is it related to what your family is like. Who knows? All these things you can figure out and you can go around and see if you can lift some fingerprints with the powder and the dust that we gave you and the tape and, and see what you might be able to, to figure out. Um, sorry, we didn't send any home any glue kits or you know <laughs> glue tanks or um, any of that really cool other ways to lift prints, but um, you can see what you're able to figure out and go and explore. And if you do end up having more questions, just um, come see me tomorrow at school and let me know and um, I can search for the answers. But thanks so much, everyone. We are so glad you came. Thank you guys for having me. Everyone's been great. And if you have any questions, I, I have my email address posted on that last slide. Principal Moffitt has it. You guys can contact me. I'm happy to help where I can. Thanks, Evidence at Coughlin, and thank you, Fairmont Falcons. Woohoo! Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow at school. Bye, everyone.